Well, what the heck was that? Oh, I know what this is. Hello, folks. Welcome. I am the one, the only. Oh, good. Only three pages. I was judicious today. Oh, I have to start to look stuff up too. That's okay. Hello, folks. I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. I'm uh, I'm here to talk about some wrestling. On oh, that's right. It's Monday tomorrow. By the time this goes up, it'll be Mardi Gras. I'll be a year older. That's depressing. Oh, well. Enough about that. You want to hear about stuff that's less depressing. You want to hear about Monday Night Raw? I guess it was less depressing. I don't know. Let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, I'm going to make this video as quick, as concise as I can. I have so many other videos to make. So much more work to do. Work to go to and stuff to do. Let's get things started. Uh, Monday Night Raw started off pretty fun. Randy Orton comes out. He says, I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh, that's empty. Toss that. And then for some reason, Kevin Owens came out and took issue. Mainly because Randy Orton started to run down Canada, which, which any true American really should. And I guess Kevin Owens, being a Canadian, wanted to defend Winnipeg. Eh, I understand. It was okay. And then I guess he had some issue with Randy Orton about that again. And Jordan. We the people. And then our first match starts, and then we have, well, not, not yet, but we have Angel Garza and Selena Vega interview. Oh my goodness, folks. Angel Garza has all the charisma. Because then he may even made poor little Charlie blush. Yeah, Charlie got a little flustered. She got a little, got a little love butterflies, baby. Because uh, Angel Garza again, Umberto was whatever. Lena Vega started to talk, just tuned her out. Then Angel Garza kissed the hand of Charlie. Angel Garza's the man. Because Charlie, Charlie was absolutely flustered. She had no clue what was going on. And like you could like see her face like literally turn red. Either that, or she's one amazing actress. I couldn't tell him. He's like tickled pink about that. Uh, so this starts off with our first match. It was Alberto Carrillo taking on Angel Garza. And wow. This is just a cousin on cousin's brawl. It starts off that way. Try to lock up, try to do some wrestling moves. And they did some like weird mixed leg lock slap fest thing. I never saw that. And then. I couldn't keep up because it was so fast, so flippy. Uh, there was the reverse slingshot suplex by Angel Garza onto Umberto. That looked absolutely amazing. Was, I think just the, the sheer verticality they get is tremendous. Uh, Garza tried a dirty pin. Didn't happen. Then it turned out to be a cousin brawl on, on the outside to get back in. And then we have the best movie to all of pro wrestling. The top rope Spanish fly. Fly, Alberto, fly. That was awesome. However, then there was a series of pen attempts. And there was a reverse of a pen attempt. Angel Garza won. I like where this is possibly going. The You have the very classic, true baby face. Versus a very dastardly and cunning heel. I like that. Therefore, this is a surf and surf match. The next, uh, there's a Becky Lynch with, with someone, I guess, one of the producers. About stuff. Uh, Ricochet came out. He was going to take on Luke Gallows, and wow, this was New Japan Pro Wrestling paint Luke Gallows. And for a while, Luke Gallows was too strong for Ricochet. It was very brawlish, very strike heavy, very New Japanish. Uh, Ricochet, however, once he started to do the flippy stuff, that was amazing. Every time Rick Ricochet, in the first part of the match, whenever you tried to do a splash, though, again, Luke Gallows being the bigger person, catch him, power slam him, toss him somewhere. But once Ricochet actually started like doing like the flippy kicks and, and everything else, 
It was good. He tried to lift up Luke Ellis. Eh, eh. Not happening. Uh, with this, Ricochet eventually did hit the... Whatever thing he calls it, it, it wasn't the 630. But it's like his like second finisher. Uh, and he pinned Luke Gallows. Luke Gallows doesn't seem that strong anymore. Are the OC just biding their time to go to AEW? Maybe they made a mistake coming out of New Japan. They were treated like royalty when they when they showed up. But then they're like, eh. New toy syndrome. Oh well. Uh, so this was it was okay. Again, I don't like the fact that they're kind of burying the club. It's a ham sandwich. And then AJ. <laughs> I can kind of see it though. I guess they're trying to build up Ricochet because he is facing Brock in the Super Showdown. That's my stone called lock, though, folks. Brock Lesnar's defeating Ricochet. Ricochet is not winning. I don't care. That's my stone cold lock. You heard it right now. Because then AJ starts to yell at the club. Uh, they see Alistair Black coming out for his match. AJ gets in his face and they just, he gets jumped by the club. This is good because Alistair Black and AJ, that's really good. That's going to be fun. It's more high profile. Then we have Brock. Brock. Lesnar coming out with Paul Heyman, of course. Talking about all that stuff. Oh, wait, oh wow. Exactly three pages. That's rare. And we have Eric Rowan taking on Alistair Black again. Um, unless I do something with this cage, this is going to get boring pretty quick. This match it was, I think, a lot better than the first one, though. Uh, Rowan again. He just shoves Alistair Black around. Rowan's definitely showing the strength in this match. However, the kicks, elbows, and knees by Alistair Black do take their effect. But whenever Alistair would try something that would be like a power move, like he tried to splash Eric Rowan, he's like, no, Rowan just picked him up, dropped him. Again, the sidewalk slam. Again, very traditional big guy moves, the sidewalk slam. Then he did like some pop-up iron claw power slam, which I thought was going to be the end. And, ooh. Eric Rowan has that headbutt. That's brutal looking. However, Eric Rowan got down by one black mask for the change. I still want to say, what's in the cage? I still say it's a skunk. I think skunk is becoming the number two choice. Or actually, probably number three. So going to Discord. Oh, wow. And fans out there, it's going to be horn swoggle in the cage. Option number two is that they say it's a possum. Plausible. I say, however, it's a skunk. And this was actually, again, a little bit better match than they had last time. This is a cheeseburger match. But beware, WWE. You keep on doing this without showing, showing us what's really in the cage. The cage. It's going to get old and boring, and no one's going to care. And we had Drew McIntyre conduct an interview with a little bit of his history. That's okay. Then our truth we revised Truth TV. And, of course, his guests were Bobby Lashley and Lana. And once Lana starts talking, everyone starts chanting, Rusev Day! Rusev Day! Rusev Day! And then Lana starts going off. She's becoming... She's becoming like... She's becoming somewhat like Sensational Sherry. And some of her manners, especially the way she's talking. Yeah, that sounds about right. And then, if not, she... I don't know. Some dresses are more flattering. This, this dress wasn't that flattering. Kind of made it look orange. That's okay. Uh, then, of course, she reminded our truth that he's a match, and he's like, whoa, I didn't anticipate this. So we had Bobby Lashley taking our truth. Uh, our truth at the beginning gets tossed around. This was actually a really quick match. Our truth, and he only hit the four moves of Doom. What was that noise? 
That was pretty fun, K. Okay. Sound like my wind chime's going off, and then the car pulled up somewhere. I don't know. I have no idea. Whatever. Where was I? Oh, yeah. It was the four moves of Doom. It was shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle. Um, I don't know. Wait. Oh. Like, belly to back suplex. Five knuckle shuffle. Our truth cannot hit the AA. He cannot hit the attitude adjustment, or as it used to be called, the FU. Uh, Lashley then hits Spear. Spear means match over, folks. Send it on home. This was eh, a ham sandwich. What is, what is it? Oh, wow, the garbage men are here late. That's why. I wondered, I wondered what was up. Yeah, the garbage men are here late. That's okay. Yeah, it's really late. Even the mailman got here first. That's weird. But then we had a contract signing for the Elimination Chamber. Eh, when Asuka speaks, you need to listen. Asuka is the best, especially when he speaks Japanese. And easy peasy. That's for, I don't think she used that, though. I was kind of waiting for that. Uh, everyone starts to, to sign the contract. Yeah, it is what it was. Uh, the King was actually pretty okay. Again, once one Shannon Baszler comes in, he's like, oh, everyone sign. I'm out of here. Uh, Asuka stares down. At, at first, Shayna stares down at Natalia. And Asuka gets up, stares at Shayna. It's a contract signing. Brawl ensues. Becky shows up. And they say, let them fight. Let them fight. Which is okay. And I don't think we ever saw Asuka versus Shayna Baszler in NXT. You can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember hearing about those. That's something I think I would have seen. Like, whoa, whoa. Has Asuka really been in, w in the main roster that long? Shannon Baszler was relatively Oh, well, maybe she was. Well, then remember, you sure I did hold the women's belt for a while. Well, I don't know. If if Asuka and Shannon ever did go at it in NXT, just kind of drop me an email let me know. Or you can leave a comment saying, you fat bastard hobo, you should watch more NXT. NXT, the good is really good, the, the bad is just blah. I even watch them. Sometimes it's like the promos they do are kind of cringeworthy too. That all kind of depends. And AEW. I think AEW overall is a better product and production than NXT. And AEW is actually really getting on par to, to like the main roster stuff. I think they just have to really work on their, work on their women's division. The women's division sucks. Then we have the Street Profits come out for a promo. And first we have Angela Dawkins taking on Murphy. I am Murphy. You will be arrested, you criminal scuzzball. Directive number one says, I will not attack OC. C. Director. Yeah. Accessing. Accessing. I don't know. That was the old Robocop reference. Which is pretty cool. Uh, so Murphy, this was actually a really quick match. Murphy is a lot quicker. Angela Dawkins, even for the size, is pretty quick. Angela Dawkins won, though. This was a quick match. Meh. This was a can of soup. Montez Ford, uh, Seth came out and says, yep, I'll do that. I'll do what Angelo did to Murphy. I'll do that to you, Seth. Seth comes out and fly, Ford, fly. But, wow. But not, not the one thing you did because you missed. Again, there were a whole series of quick pen attempts. Uh, Seth hit the barricade bomb. Ford went for his comeback. He hit that spike DDT. That's a good-looking spike, DDT. <laughs> and he, he took off, but not enough. 
Eventually, he did get curb stomped. I'll tell you what, this was at least a better match than the other one. It actually was actually a lot better, mainly because it was longer. This is a cheeseburger match. Then in the main event of the evening, we have Randy Orton taking on Kevin Owens. Fight Owens fight. Now, this was actually really fun. I tell you what, Orton is so good when he wants to be. I think now he's getting to that stage of his career where he's kind of really enjoying himself. And he's he has, I think, a little bit more freedom. He gets to pick and choose who he faces. So, again, Kevin Seen's no, well, Kevin Owens is no slouch. So, again, of course, Randy Orton's going to have a really good match with him. Again, when, when, when Orton really wants to put on a five star match, he can. And Kevin Owens will oblige him. I mean, for the most part, I've been saying this for a while Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens is really a five star match machine. I don't think he's ever had anything worse than, than like, Three and a half. And that might have been way back in his Chikara days, maybe. Even before Chikara Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Maybe when he was just into, the, into pro wrestling with uh, El Generico. Maybe, yeah, right around before they tagged with, he tagged with El Generico. Even then he was still giving half-star matches. Again, Kevin Owens is Kevin Owens. Again, he did the cannonball. Uh, Kev got distracted, though. He has Sethitis. Because, again, the Monday Night Messiah, uh, the, architect, the Architects of Pain, and I Am Murphy came out. Of course, that distracted him. Uh, Randy Orton is no dummy. He's like, you know what? If, if you're going to be distracted, I'll definitely take advantage of that. So he hit the draping DDT, uh, and then I don't even think that was an RKO. I think there was that. Oh, Kevin Owens also has the Canadian headbutt. Again, let me know where the Canadian headbutt stands on the list of headbutts, because I think right now at one and one a, it's going to be Scottish headbutt and Samoan headbutt. Canadian headbutt might be like the, the second or third one. But again, let me know in the comment section. Then. Again, it was the draping DDT. Then it was a fast count. And even Randy Orton got up and said, Huh? Okay. I won, I guess. And Kevin Owens was irate. Seth is, like, smiling. And then Kevin Owens. Again. He stared at the ref. Randy, of course, beat up. Kevin Owens, because Kevin Owens was distracted. A little bit more physically this time by Seth. Seth threw the, the threw two chairs into Randy Orton. But Randy Orton lets Thrones know, it's like, hey, I do this on my terms, not your terms. And Kevin Owens was just absolutely confused. He picked up the chair. Randy Orton's like, you know what? I did what I had to do. I got paid. I'm done. Uh, so he turns on, on Kid Ref. I wonder if this is. I don't know, but Kevin Owens like got him back in the corner. The poor ref was was cowering in the corner, and Kevin Owens ripped his referee shirt. Kevin Owens, you should never put your hands on a referee. Find him. And then what happened is that the ref was wearing a Monday Night Messiah shirt. Oh no, this is shades of the NWO. Oh. No, no, no. The Messiah was too much. Now with the NWO, no, no, no. But Kid Ref, he got stunned for his for his tra traitorous things and power bomb through a table. But Seth, he's a good man. Whatever. I'll tell you what. Overall, this was fun. And of course, Kevin Owens just curses. Come here, you bitch. Kevin Owens is best when he curses. The match overall was fun. I enjoyed it. This, it, even with all the antics, this is still a surf and turf match.
which makes this episode of Raw actually a cheeseburger Raw. So that was interesting. I, I hope SmackDown's better. Or I hope, actually, I hope something happens at Super Showdown. So if not, that's going to be a long show. So I'm only going to catch part of it because I do have to go to work at 3. So what's going to happen the uh, rest of this week? Uh, this is going up, hope, hopefully, Tuesday. And then Tuesday is going to be both. Or I plan to have. It might just be Impact. Wednesday will be NWA and AEW. I, I might, might, I might do NWA Tuesday too. Wednesday is definitely going to be AEW. Thursday nightish, and oh, and then also shoot, and then also probably Wednesday you'll see my predictions. About both Super Showdown and Revolution. Uh, Wednesday's AEW. Thursday will be Super Showdown. Friday, uh, yeah, Friday will be SmackDown. And Saturday, Super Showdown. I know I work Saturday. Is that the 11 to. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 11 to 5 30. Indeed. That's cool. I can deal with that. I'll still be home. And I can still... Ooh, I can still get to the gym, too. Nice. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And be on the lookout for new videos coming up.